To Kill a Mockingbird, Part 2 Section 2, Plot Summary The story takes place during three years of the Great Depression in the fictional, tired old town of Maycomb, Alabama. The narrator, six-year-old Scout Finch, lives with her older brother Jem and their widowed father Atticus, a middle-aged lawyer. Jem and Scout befriend a boy named Dill, who visits Maycomb to stay with his aunt for the summer. The three children are terrified by and fascinated with their neighbor, the reclusive Boo Radley. The adults of Maycomb are hesitant to talk about Boo, and for many years, few have seen him. The children feed each other's imaginations with rampant rumors about his grotesque appearance and his reasons for remaining hidden, and they dream of ways to get him out of his home. Following two summers of friendship with Dill, Scout, and Jem, find that someone is leaving them small gifts in a tree outside the Radley place. Several times, the mysterious Boo makes gestures of affection to the children, but to their disappointment, never appears in person. Atticus is assigned to defend a black man named Tom Robinson, who has been accused of raping Mayella Evil, a young white woman. Although many of Maycomb's citizens disapprove, Atticus agrees to defend Tom to the best of his ability. Scout is subjected to other children taunting Atticus, calling him a nigger lover, and she is attempted to stand up for her father's honor by fighting, even though he has told her not to. For his part, Atticus faces a group of men intent on lynching Tom, but this danger is averted when Scout, Jem, and Dill shame the mob into dispersing by forcing them to view the situation from Atticus's and Tom's point of view. Because Atticus does not want them to be present at Tom Robinson's trial, Scout, Jem, and Dill watch it in secret from the colored balcony. Atticus establishes that the accusers, Mayella and her father, Bob Ewell, the town drunk, are lying. It also becomes clear that the friendless Mayella was making sexual advances toward Tom, and that her father caught her in the act. Despite significant evidence of Tom's innocence, he is convicted. Jem's faith in justice is badly shaken, and as is Atticus's, when a hopeless Tom is shot and killed while trying to escape from prison. Bob Ewell is humiliated by the trial and vows revenge. He spits in Atticus's face on the street and tries to break into the judge's house and menaces Tom Robinson's window. Finally, he attacks the defenseless Jem and Scout as they walk home from a Halloween pageant at their school. Jem's arm is broken in the struggle, but amid the confusion, someone comes to the rescue. The mysterious man carries Jem home, while Scout eventually recognizes him as the reclusive Boo Radley. Maycomb's sheriff arrives and discovers that Bob Ewell has been killed. The sheriff argues with Atticus about the prudence and ethics of holding Jem or Boo responsible. Atticus eventually accepts the sheriff's story that Ewell simply fell on his own knife. Boo asks Scout to walk him home, and after she says goodbye to him at his front door, he disappears again. While standing on the Radley porch, Scout imagines life from Boo's perspective, and regrets that they never repaid him for the gifts he had given them. Section 3 Autobiographical Elements Lee has said that To Kill a Mockingbird is not an autobiography, but rather an example of how an author should write about what he knows and write truthfully. Nevertheless, several people and events from Lee's childhood parallel those to the fictional scout. Lee's father, Amasa Coleman Lee, was an attorney similar to Atticus Finch, and in 1919 he defended two black men accused of murder. After they were convicted, hanged, and mutilated, he never tried another criminal case. Lee's father was also the editor and publisher of the Monroeville newspaper. Although more conservative than Atticus with regard to race, he gradually became more liberal in his later years. Though Scout's mother died when she was a baby, and Lee was twenty-five when her mother died, her mother was prone to a nervous condition that rendered her mentally and emotionally absent. Lee also had a brother named Edwin, who, like the fictional Jem, was four years older than his sister. As in the novel, a black housekeeper came once a day to care for the Lee house and family. The character of Dill was modeled on Lee's childhood friend, Truman Capote, then known as Truman Persons. 
just as Dill lived next door to Scout during the summer, Capote lived next door to Lee with his aunts while his mother visited New York City. Like Dill, Capote had an impressive imagination and a gift for fascinating stories. Both Lee and Capote were atypical children. Both loved to read, and whereas Lee was a scrappy tomboy who was quick to fight, Capote was the object of ridicule for his advanced vocabulary and lisp. She and Capote made up and acted out stories they wrote on on an old Underwood typewriter Lee's father gave them. They became very good friends when both felt alienated from their peers. Capote called the two of them apart people. In 1960, Capote and Lee traveled to Kansas together to investigate the multiple murder that was the basis of Capote's nonfiction novel, In Cold Blood. Down the street from the Lees lived a family whose house was always boarded up. They served as the models for the fictional Radleys. The son of the family got into some legal trouble, and the father kept him at home for twenty-four years out of shame. He was hidden until virtually forgotten by everyone he knew and died in 1952. The origin of Tom Robinson is less clear, though many have speculated that his inspiration came from several models. When Lee was ten years old, a white woman near Monroeville accused a black man named Walter Lett of raping her. The story in the trial recovered by her father's newspaper, and Lett was convicted and sentenced to death. After a series of letters appeared claiming Lett had been falsely accused, his sentence was commuted to life in prison, where he died of tuberculosis in 1937. Scholars have guessed that the inspiration for Tom Robinson's plight was the infamous case of the Scottsboro Boys, in which nine black men were convicted of raping two white women on very poor evidence. However, Lee stated in 2005 that she had in mind something less sensational, although the Scottsboro case served the same purpose, to display southern prejudices. Emmett Till, a black teenager who was murdered for flirting with a white woman in Mississippi in 1955, and whose death is credited as the catalyst for the civil rights movement, is also considered a model for Tom Robinson. End of Part 2